The Tiri autoloading Swedish heavy tank, the Emil one, is known for its incredibly strong and robust frontal armor. If you're using your 10 degrees of gun depression in this vehicle, your frontal armor is sitting upwards of 280 millimeters thick, which is incredible. That means that basically any tier 7 and most tier 8s that are aiming at you need to load premium to penetrate you, even if they have a chance at cutting through that turret armor. Not to mention, it carries a 960 clipping gun, which means that yeah, in a matter of six seconds, you're able to easily rip off half or even three-fourths of a tier seven hit point pull, and even tier eights and nines, you're still tearing shreds into. Yeah, the Emil one is a tank every single time I make a video on, I always suggest people to grind, and I always say is basically the best bang for your buck on a tier eight vehicle because, well, guess what? It's a free tank to grind, and in certain aspects, it's better than most of the tier eight overpowered vehicles. Now, the M3O is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. This is the latest tier 8 in the game as a tech tree. It's an auto-loading tier 8 with also 8 degrees of gun depression. It's not 10, but it is very solid at 8 degrees. It's got a very, very strong gun at that. In fact, statistically compared to the Emil 1, the gun is better in every single aspect. It's got more damage per minute at 6% more. It's got more penetration, and even on the premium, it has more penetration, which is good because, of course, heat with calibrated go very, very well to together upwards of 278 millimeters of heat penetration to be exact. Not to mention it's got better aiming time by about 10%, better dispersion by about 6%, and as well, way better on movement dispersion. So overall, the M3O is way, way more accurate than the Emil one and it's got more DPM and penetration, basically making the vehicle flat out better on the gun. The mobility of this tank is exactly the same as the Emil one It's a little bit slower in reverse, but it's not bad by any means. It's got about a 25% better power to weight ratio, which is amazing when you think about it. That means that the M3O is easily able to accelerate all the way up to its 35 km per hour top speed, which makes it feel a lot more flexible, especially when it's got better terrain resistance and quite a bit better traverse speed at 25 degrees a second, 32% better. Yeah, you'd look at the statistics here and think that the M3O is basically a better Emil 1 in every aspect. But you look at the win rate and you'd be like, well, wait, why is it lower? It's a lot lower at that. Even though, you know, there's a huge amount of people playing it, it is quite a bit lower than the Emil 1. Well, the biggest answer is the armor. The armor in the Emil 1 is 230 base, and when hull down, it's upwards of 280. If you're using heat, that's over 316 millimeters thick because of the no shell normalization. That is incredibly thick when you think about it. When we compare that to the M3O, first of all, the upper plate and lower plate has no armor whatsoever. That is very poor. That means that you are exposing massive chunks of armor, which is going to make your vehicle much more vulnerable and susceptible to being penetrated. The turret cheeks as well are very weak. Let's say you get out a tier 8 with very good penetration. Well, it's going to cut straight through that turret armor, as you can see, with no problem whatsoever at 155, 240. Yeah, it's quite weak. So, the turret armor and the armor in general on the M3O is way weaker than the Emil 1. It's also a much larger tank, as you can see. So, with all these things combined, I find the M3O a much more situationally played tank. If you know what you're doing, you can do incredible things with this vehicle. The one thing that I forgot to mention is that this vehicle has a 2.7 second injure clip reload, where the Emil 1 has a 3 second. That means in total that this vehicle saving 0.6 seconds out of the clip, almost the same as a T57 Heavy compared to the AMX 50B. That is very, very influential, and that means that you're able to dump out your damage a lot quicker than your average tier 8 autoloader. I personally do enjoy playing the M3O more. It's a little bit more mobile. I find it more flexible because of that mobility and the clipping potential, but we're going to see how it's able to do in this battle. As I did say, the armor is way weaker. A vehicle like the Chimera would not be able to penetrate whatsoever a hull down a mill one. But the M6, yo, uh, not the M6, yo, sorry, the M3O, it's late in night. I'm just going to say that as an excuse. It's uh, 3.30 in the morning, as you can see right now, so... Yeah, I'm just making this video before I go to sleep because I am doing some fun things tomorrow. But here we go. Let the speed accelerate. It's not incredibly quick, as you can see. One thing that I do love about this tank is the PBR files. They look incredible. 
And uh, yeah, it's, I just really think Wargaming is doing a fantastic job on adding the HD textures into the game. So what do we have here? Well, we got a Lerva and an Annihilator coming onto my side of the map. So because of that, I'm not super worried about being left alone here. Hopefully they're going to do their job and help me out big time. Now I'm going to kind of wait here. What do they have? Well, they got an Object 252 and a Tiger 2. Now those are very, very strong Tier 8 heavy tanks. In fact, strong enough to put a halt in my gameplay. So I got to be careful. I got plenty of penetration to cut through them, but I don't have the armor to really brawl with them. So that's the issue here. You know, I can pen them, but they'll pen me back just as easily. Now we got the Chimera, and we've also got the SU-152 off to the side. What are we going to do in this exact moment? Well, I'm going to try and push forward. Oh, that's an ISU. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, th yeah, that's about what I expected. Now, what I find stupid about this ISU is he basically lost his entire hit point pool just to shoot me once. Was it worth it? No, I really don't think so. I'm going to be honest there. And he's dead. Thank you very much, Annihilator. So now we got another 10 seconds left on our clip and then we are going to pull around the corner and hopefully get some shells into the chimera phantom now again that 900 clipping potential feels pretty dang solid when you're able to get it out so there's one shell into you let's go for uh well let's go for an he actually into the side of the leo Ooh, baby there you go 300 and let's go for one more shell another 300 tap so with that, we've gotten two clips effectively out now, and with that average being now 900, we've dealt over, what, 1800 damage now? Pretty dang solid. Now, unfortunately, our Annihilator does not know what aiming is, so kind of didn't go for the weak spot there. We've also got vehicles coming up on the rear, another big disadvantage, but we're going to get one shell into you, finishing him off, and now we're going to go for the T-44. There's one tap into the T-44, and we, uh, well, we got to be a little bit careful here, but let's go for one more tap. Yeet! There you go. Another nice tap, and with that, we're at 2,900 potential damage dumped out. Now, I am going to start driving away. I don't want to be hitting the booty by that T-44. No, thank you. He's a, he's a stinky player, so we're going to push over here. Eight more seconds left on the clip as it is and then hopefully we should be able to dump some more damage out here we go eight is seven six five four three two one and boop there you go say goodbye to the tiger two and with that all that's left is the enemy t44 this was an incredibly solid game just to show what this tank is still capable of doing even though it doesn't have all of that armor but yeah, it is a super strong tank. I think that the Emil 1 would have done very strong in this scenario as well. But that extra DPM, that accuracy, and honestly, I just think the tank seems more flexible to me. So let's now try and catch a T-44. Now we know that he's obviously going this way. So the smartest idea would be to try and cut him off. Now, unfortunately, this tank is still a heavy, which means it's not the fastest, obviously. So this Lorraine is most likely going to be able to cut this guy off as well. But I'm thinking the 44 should be spotted somewhere around here by now. So I'm just going to keep on driving towards this way. He might have doubled back, but at that point, oh, we actually the Lerva spotted. And he's been shot. Yeah, I was thinking, okay, there's only one spot that guy would be detected. But there you go. Game's over. Pretty solid battle for the first attempt in the M3, yo. And uh, that really portrayed how I personally feel about the tank. It can do very, very well if you know what you're doing in it. Now, the thing about the Emil one is that it's an easy tank to play. Because it has such a nice gun, it's sure, its accuracy is doo-doo, but the gun itself is nice. You know, if you're front line in that vehicle and you're hull down, which is a very simple play style, you just hide the lower plate and you use gun depression, it's a very simple attribute to the vehicle you're basically impenetrable so you don't even need the uh, good player in the mill one and you can still do some incredible amount of damage numbers the thing about the m3o is that for the same people that are playing the mill one you can't do that in this vehicle you have to know what you're doing obviously it's great hull down the turret is actually incredibly thick but that doesn't negate the fact that if you're not hull down, if you're pushing this tank in a scenario where its armor is very weak, or, you know, like last game, if that Chimera didn't kind of not know what he was doing, and that T-44 and the enemy tanks had turned around and tried to actually shoot me, I would have easily been taken out. I'm going to be completely honest. I made a gamble that last battle and expected the enemy team to be bad, and they were. That ISU made a really stupid move, and because of that, he lost uh, basically his entire hit point pool for what he did. So that is something to keep in mind about these types of vehicles is that while statistics may say that certain people are performing better in one tank over the other, I don't think that means that the Emil one's better than the M3O because I think that a good player in the M3O can honestly do better than a player in the Emil one just because of the situational awareness. So here we are. 
hull down. Now, this vehicle doesn't have as much gun depression. The little one probably would have been able to work this here quite easily, but I think 8 degrees is still plenty to basically work any ridgeline in the game. Nobody's been spotted. The Leo's pushing quite aggressive. So what that means is we should start seeing people pop up right around here, right around here, and yeah, where the Dracula is off to the side. So let's keep on pushing forwards. Keep on going, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, da, 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 da. We've got the Dracula off to the side, and ooh, you don't know how much I would love to get a shell into him. Perfect shell into the Dracula. And uh, maybe we'll be able to get another, I believe we've also got vehicles like the Amex over here. Ooh, yeah, that's not great. Let's go for uh, another shell, maybe into you, and yeet! Yeah, we're just gonna push forwards. At this point, I don't really have the, uh, the accuracy to hit that shot, so I'm just gonna kinda wait here. We got 15 seconds left on the gun. We got the Amex pushing back, and with that, I'm going to try and squeeze my way through here. I'm hoping that I don't get hit. Yes, thank God. I was really hoping that we wouldn't get penned by that guy. So now with that, this should be a lot better for us. We've already gotten one tank taken out. And with that, we've got vehicles like the Amex over here, which we should be able to get one miss into. Let's go again, and yeet! There you go. That's more what I was looking for. And yeet! There you go. Two easy penetrations into the Amex, and we back right in the cover again. Obviously, I still love that reverse speed. Being able to reverse at 16 kilometers per hour is very, very nice. Now, the Emil 1, I could easily sit hull down here and not worry at all about being penetrated. That is a big advantage of the Emil. But this tank still does have pretty good haul down capabilities. And with that, we're going to try and get... Ooh, ooh, no thank you. We're going to try and... Uh, we're going to try and not lose our hit points. There's another nice tap into you. Let's go for a heat shell into you. And uh, you know what? We've, we can trade a shot here. There you go. Another nice tap into the E75TS. So with that, we dumped out about, what, 800 damage there. And now we're back to reloading once again. Now, the heat pen on this vehicle is incredible. It's plenty to cut through basically any armor that you need to. So with that, I'm not going to have to worry at all about cutting through armor on like the E75TS or anything at that level. So here we go. Again, let's poke this and let's get a nice tap. Ooh, or a bounce. Wow, very surprising, actually. Did not think that shell would bounce. We've also got the T44 off to the side. There's one tap into the T44. And let's go for one more. Now, that E75TS is a very strong target. Probably the most menacing one I've got to deal with. The issue is we've got the E75TS plus the uh, Carnarvon over here. Both of them very strong tanks. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to lose all of my hit points. Not yet, at least. We've also got the RHM pushing over here. Yeah, um, I'm not liking my team too much right now, if I'm going to be completely honest. The E75TS is pushing quite aggressive, and with that, we've also got the RHM over here, and I'm going to try and get a shell into the RHM. There you go, one nice tap in. I will take that very, very much. And we've got the Carnarvon off to the rear. Let's go for maybe a shot into the Carnarvon. Yeet! There you go, one nice tap into you. And with that, again, very, very cautious gameplay coming out of me. We've got the Amex M4. Let's try and finish him off. There you go. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. That basically ruined my game. I don't even know how that's possible, but that's incredibly unfortunate for me. All right. Let's start reloading again. We've got some deadly tanks in front of us. we got some tanks on the side. Hopefully that Amex does not realize I'm on a clip reload. Oh, my God. What is my team doing, though? That's a good question, isn't it? I would love to know what my team is doing. Let's go for an HE shell on this AMX. Hopefully eat! Oh my god, the HE did no damage! Well, I can't really blame anything on the M3. As we all saw, it did a very solid job. I was up against very strong opponents, vehicles like the AMX M4. We had the Carnarvon, even though the Carnarvon's not incredible and not very meta, still is a very strong tank with that gun regarding DPM. And the E75TS is probably one of the strongest tier 8 premiums in the game. Unfortunately, my E75TS and my teammates don't really do much this game. They just kind of, yeah, like this lightweight here, they just kind of died. So, yeah, gotta be honest, if our team had done a better job, this would have been a very easy win, especially for this guy in the Amex M4. Technically, we should have killed him. That was an HE shell with one health, and we low-rolled him by, like, a massive chunk. So, I'm gonna be honest, if we had killed that guy, we probably could have done another 400 damage or so that game, and, yeah, we did 3,400. So, I don't even need to make an excuse. The vehicle did good. It did a very good job. The armor... It was solid. You know, we bounced four shells, and out of the six shells we received, that's not bad. That's a 40% 40, 40 uh, bounce rate there, so not bad. You know, we did 3,400 damage, and again, this is the M3O. It's very strong if you're able to do good things in it. I'm averaging 3,281 damage in the vehicle, and sure, while my win rate may not be amazing, that's probably more down to the teams than it is the vehicle itself. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I personally think that it's actually very comparable to the Emil 1. If you like this vehicle, you'll definitely like the M3O, maybe even more. I would suggest to grind this vehicle, and I would highly suggest the grind
tiny M7 yo and the M6. They're both incredibly strong vehicles. And getting your way up to the tier 10, it's just the M6 yo is probably one of the strongest tier 10s currently in the game. Hopefully all of you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. But other than that, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.